reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has bestowed on us in Christ every spiritual blessing in the heavens. God chose us in him before the world began to be holy and blameless in his sight, to be full of love. He likewise predestined us through Christ Jesus to be his adopted sons. Such was his will and pleasure that all might praise the glorious favor he has bestowed on us in his beloved. It is in Christ and through his blood that we have been redeemed and our sins forgiven. So immeasurably generous is God's favor to us. God has given us the wisdom to understand fully the mystery, the plan he was pleased to decree in Christ, to be carried out in the fullness of time, namely, to bring all things in the heavens and on earth into one under Christ's headship. In him we were chosen, for in the decree of God, who administers everything according to his will and counsel, we were predestined to praise his glory by being the first to hope in Christ. In him you too were chosen when you heard the glad tidings of salvation, the word of truth, and believed in it. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit who had been promised. He is the pledge of our inheritance, the first payment against the full redemption of a people God has made his own to praise his glory. Verbum Domini. Show us, O Lord, your kindness and grant us your salvation. You have favored, O Lord, your land. You have forgiven the guilt of your people. You have covered all their sins. You have withdrawn all your wrath. You have revoked your burning anger. Will you not instead give us life? And shall not your people rejoice in you? Show us, O Lord, your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people and to his faithful ones and to those who put him in their hope. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Jesus said to his disciples, If any man wishes to come after me, he must deny his very self, take up his cross, and begin to follow in my footsteps. 
Whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would a man show if he were to gain the whole world and destroy himself in the process? What can a man offer in exchange for his very self? Verbum Domini. I was thinking about how, uh, in God's providence, the through EWTN, that we would have begun through the Franciscan order. So in the universal church, the, the Franciscan calendar gets a little bit of a bump because the St. Leonard of Port Maurice and the many other saints, you know, even to celebrate St. Francis as a solemnity, uh, all the Franciscans get a little bump in the, in the audience in the, it, through EWTN. So for what it's worth, but St. Leonard of Port Maurice was born Paul Jerome on December 20th of 1676. And his father was a good man who encouraged his children in holiness. And his mother uh, sadly died when Leonard was only two and his father remarried and they had uh, more children. And two of those boys also became friars and a daughter a nun, so good family life engenders uh, vocations. Although St. Leonard at first looked towards the medical profession and went to school in Rome for that, upon entering a Fr the Franciscan convent of St. Bonaventure, he heard this verse of Compline, Converte nos Deus salutaris noster, convert us, O oh God, our salvation. And this converted his life. So he was able to enter the friars before his 21st birthday. From St. Francis, Leonard caught the vision of this central truth, the love of God made manifest in Christ crucified. In his work of bringing men to God, he sought to vividly, vividly impress upon their minds and hearts the recalling and impress of Christ's suffering for them. And he saw no better method, as he said, to meditate upon death, judgment, hell, and eternity. The devil sleeps on unmoved and heedless, but meditate on the passion of our Savior that is his nightmare, his torment. Meditation upon the moment of our own death is a traditional uh, devotion. It's a good and holy one. But St. Leonard's point is that it does not lead to conversion as effectively and surely as meditation on the passion of the Lord. And one reason for this may be that the first meditation on the four last things, as they're called, often centers us upon ourselves and leads to depression. The second moves us in compassion, which means to suffer with, out of our interior to look upon the love of God in Christ Jesus, like Our Lady at the foot of cro the cross, to suffer with him. This gives us hope and inflames our love, leading us to reject sin in order to live for him. As St. Paul says to the Corinthians, for Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. In 1342, the Franciscan order had been given guardianship of the various shrines in the Holy Land, and over time gained indulgences for those who would come. 
as many could not visit the holy places because of difficulty and danger, the practice of spiritual pilgrimage was developed over time, that we can go in prayer and love to the foot of the cross. To this end, to engender fruitful meditation on the passion of the Lord, St. Leonard erected stations of the cross at every parish mission, a work he did for 44 years. In that time, he, re he erected at least 572 sets of stations, which he called a perpetual mission, erecting one even at the Colosseum in Rome on Christmas of 1750. And St. Leonard was so successful in his preaching that Pope Pius XI, on March 17th of 1923, made him the patron saint of all priests engaged in parish missions. St. Leonard prepared for each parish mission by retiring into solitude to preach a mission to Friar Leonard in order to fill up again the love of God. As the saying goes, nemo dat quo non habit, no one can give what one does not have. If the preacher is not filled with the love of God, his words will not flow from the abundance of the heart. As our Lord says, how can you say to your brother, brother, let me take out the speck that is in your eye when you yourself do not see the log that is in your, your own eye? You hypocrite, first take out the log of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. For no good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its fruit. For figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good man out of the good treasure of his heart produces good, and the evil man out of the evil, his evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. St. Leonard was by all evidence filled with the abundance of love for the passionate love who is Christ crucified. In meditation upon the, the sufferings of the Lord, who is crowned with thorns, who poured out the precious uh, wine of his blood, removes the thorns and brambles from our mind and heart. He is the good treasure that we must sell all to find uh, to seek and to find. Or as St. Leonard says, a precious pearl set in a gold ring, how brilliant it is. The way of the cross is that pearl. And he said this as he erected the stations in the Colosseum, the golden ring which had seen so many, the martyrdom of so many Christians. And finally on mercy, St. Leonard always or often had upon uh, his lips the indulgence prayer, my Jesus mercy, my Jesus mercy. The passion teaches us the infinite reach and incredible humility of God's merciful love. And although fiery in his sermons, for the confessional St. Leonard advised and practiced brevity with devout penitence so that the confessor would have more time for those who needed more encouragement and, and advice. And quote, I want to lure the big fish into my net, he said, not the little ones. And confessors, uh, we love to catch big fish, yes, as we call them. So in regard to his meekness in the confessional, St. Leonard said, if the Lord at the moment of my death reproves me for being too kind to sinners, I will answer, my dear Jesus, 
If it is a fault to be too kind to sinners, it is a fault I learned from you. For you never scolded anyone who, who came to you seeking mercy. The stark truth is that meditation upon our Lord's passion is far too neglected. Even as we daily celebrate the sacrament of the memorial of the passion in the Mass. The Most Holy Eucharist is the representation of his sacrifice of love for us. And it is here that we unite our sufferings with his and all together with the priest offer to the Eternal Father the Holy Sacrifice, that we are compassionate, that we suffer with him and offer to the Holy Father our sufferings and love. This should be our daily meditation upon the Passion, along, and not to neglect the stations, but this is the sacrament of the meditation of entrance of our compassion with his uh, crucified love. Yet our minds and hearts are often distracted from this source of salvation, that Jesus himself is present body, blood, soul, and divinity in this offering. So convert us, O God, our salvation. <clears throat>